Aloha everybody, my name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host podcast across worlds, and I stream on Twitch and TikTok at Lehua Superfina. Today we're going to talk about five manga manhwa webtoons that I've been reading recently. Once Wicked, Always Wicked. This is about a woman from our world who suddenly wakes up in a novel, one of her favorite novels actually, in the body of Camellia El Casas. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it's actually a character that she's not very familiar with. And what I like about this one is it's sort of like a villainess who has revenge and such. But what's interesting about it is this person who got transmigrated isn't really revenging. It's not like in other stories I've read where someone feels sympathy or the villainess has regrets and she goes back in time, she regresses. This one is more like, yo, a lot of crap is happening to this person. Everyone who's done her wrong will have their due. And she's just going along as if this, she is Camellia. And I think she's in terms that she's going to be this person for the rest of her life. And so she just doesn't want, you know, the rest of her life to deal with all these crappy people. And she's just wanting to survive. She knows how the world works. And what's interesting about this is she's nobility. And according to this world, every noble should have like an ability. And for some reason, her person that she transmigrated into doesn't have one yet. And the person doesn't ever get it for some reason, but she knows how. And nobles who don't have abilities, they get screwed over. They get ridiculed. Their credibility is shot. Like a lot of bad stuff happens to them. So as Camellia, she is going to create or invoke this manifest this ability. She's going to invoke the ability and survive in this world. And she's going to use every way she can to succeed. Marriage and sword. The synopsis for this is Haas Targel, the sword of the emperor and the glory of the empire. Haas Targel, I, I hope I'm saying it right, whose name was respectful was doomed. They weren't just doomed, they were destroyed. Just to make ends meet, LJ. This one, I'm unsure how to say the name too. LJ, LJ, LJ hides her identity and goes to war. After returning home, LJ, who made a name for herself through her man amazing swordsmanship and gained a fortune, thought that all she had to do was live a happy life. Unexpectedly, a political marriage was arranged by the Emperor's orders. Her partner to be was Sean Crixus. I hope I'm saying that right too. Deputy commander of the Imperial Army who she saved in the war. So I actually read this a while back, but then I just didn't keep up with it for some reason. And then all of a sudden I kept seeing it popping up. And I'm like, did I read this before? And then I'm reading it, I was like, oh yeah. And I'm like wondering why did I stop reading this? This was interesting. But the synopsis does not do it justice, actually. So we have this girl, her name is like Urgent L Jeans. It kind of looks like Ur guys or Eugene, but there's like an R in there. Besides that, so we got our female lead. She actually had the swordsmanship ability that runs in her family, and she has a little brother. And this is like in that time period where it's patriarch. So the men are supposed to inherit the title, be the head of the family. And unfortunately, the brother does not have that swordmanship skill, but she has it, but she can't do much because she's a woman. So it's like kind of be dismissed on her because she's a woman and their house was ruined and they had no money. So when they say that she goes off to war, she goes off to war as a mercenary and she gets a lot of money. She creates this group that's mercenary. She's the leader of them. Her swordsmanship is amazing. And along the way, she saves this guy named Sean. And Sean just idolizes her. And they were partners and they had a great chemistry. And then Elgin, Eugene, Elgin, she had to leave because something was happening at home. And a year passed. So Sean's like, what happened to Elgin? And the mercenary group that she created is called Elijah. And so Sean's asking them, what happened? And they're like, lip sealed secret. 
Well, the person he's looking for ends up being the person that he marries by the order of the emperor. And what's funny was nobody knew what Elgin looked like, so they totally thought the nobles who suggested Elgin, they totally thought the House of Targal was going to be like, haha, Sean, who doesn't really have a title and such, is going to get this ruined house, hold and such. But little did they know, Sean gained great stuff. He gained a great wife, a partner, and powerful, powerful allies. Now the story just doesn't end there though. There's actually a world building in this, and there's a religion, and there's a reason why Elgin was actually not from this world. Like, Elgin has their past life memories. So it's like a reincarnation kind of thing. So there's like some supernatural thing going on and there's like another supernatural thing going on with Sean. And you know, we're still finding out what's going on. Please don't come to the villainous stationery store. This is a really interesting story. Let's see what the synopsis says. Uh, she became the incompetent villainess who commits wrongdoings in order to earn the love of her fiancé, the male lead. Her reputation was already at rock bottom and the main characters who can't live without each other are having an affair. So after she was kicked out, she set up a stationery store in front of a school. She reminisces and snacks, beer candy, and even bubbles. Just, you wait kids. But somehow her young customers are a little weird. The great magic swordsman, the next crown prince, the villainous tower master, and finally the hidden villain. The stationery store, which she thought would be peaceful, left her with no rest. Help me, I just wanted to live a normal life. <laughs> this story doesn't start at like the usual. Our female lead, her name is Meldik. Is that how you say it? Uh, M-E-L-D-E-N-I-K. Meldenik. Let's, her, let's call her Mel. So Mel. This person says they swap bodies with a character in a story that they've read before. And it's actually the villainous. And what's interesting about this is she's not a real villainous. She's been kind of framed. She's been in the wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. And there's for some reason, her family just doesn't like her for some reason. And then we find out little by little, which was not revealed in the novel. So from the villainous perspective, we kind of get more inside story. For example, for some reason, the villainous's mother married this guy and this guy got together with her they had a child and next thing you know the villainous's mother dies but then the, her father he was with this other woman and then she has a daughter so that's the daughter who's the female lead and then the villainous has had a fiance and the fiance fell in love with her sister the female lead and then it's like the villainess is a bad person because she's trying to keep her fiance and she does all these things to make sure that her sister is out of the picture. Well, if you think about it, anyone would get mad if they get cheated on, especially if it's their fiance. You know, it's like, you're supposed to be committed to me. We agreed, our families agreed. Why are you cheating on me? And they make it like she's crazy and she's horrible and she's just being mean to her sister out of nowhere. But no, she had every right. And then it turns out that her fiance, their family, wanted to marry her because apparently there's something going on with her bloodline, her ancestors, her heritage. There's a secret and it starts to unfold as you read the story. Right now, I think we're on chapter 52. A lot happened, a lot is revealed, but there's still mystery. Now, with this story, Mel, she leaves the home. She just wants to survive. You know, she doesn't know about, it has, this world has magic. And she's not familiar with magic. She knows she doesn't have magic because according to her character, the villainess doesn't have magic. And so she just wants a normal life. That's what I meant by in the synopsis. 
she just wants a normal life and she's always wanted to have like a store for kids with candies and toys and that's where it's talking about these kids are weird because she's interacting with the kids and then the kids love her so much they want her to be happy so they find suitors for her and they're trying to be love matching and whatnot and coincidentally it's powerful figures <laughs> so this is getting interesting because there's some political power going on there's some, good, some shady stuff going on and now we're slowly seeing it little by little the real daughter is back yo i've been posting tiktok videos and shorts about this this manga manwa is getting so good we got helga who is a daughter of a maid and she actually has a sister who's the daughter of the duchess yeah the father mm -hmm. he was being geeky and whatnot so for some reason the duchess's daughter you know goes missing so we got helga who's raised to be like the next heir she's had all this pressure to uphold the family name to be perfect she's always compared if my daughter was here helen was here she would have had all these opportunities she would have this luxury you don't deserve this yo the duchess is like got like the superiority complex thing going on where she views helga inferior because she's the daughter of a maid and that's not her daughter and she's raising this this child that she hates and she misses her daughter she's looking for her daughter blah 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 well one day her daughter comes back okay and they had this crazy plan to kick helga out and make their daughter the duchess's daughter take her identity so all the work that helga did built was going to be taken away from her and given to helen well, things don't fall into place. And Helga knew what was going on and she had a plan B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. And yo, it is getting so good. We're at chapter 63. We see some love interests. We see more love interests. We see people, characters doing things we didn't expect. We're getting such, such juicy scenes where people we dislike liked are getting their due and my goodness it is mm, i really like this title an unseemly lady this title i actually kind of stop reading and then continue reading because i'm curious there's something about this story around like meh about let me just read you the synopsis and see if it catches your attention like it did for me I was the only younger sister of the female protagonist in the reverse harem novel. In addition, I was exceptionally pampered by the female lead after waking up after being very, very sick. I used that to defeat the original inexcusable trash male leads who only hurt my sister. Uh, some quotes. Lily, how are you? Do you like cake? Lily is blah, blah, blah. Would you like to eat this? For some reason, the male candidates, male lead candidates, seem anxious to see her and then yeah actually this is a really bad synopsis <laughs> so we got this person this girl who wakes up in the body of the female protagonist's little sister in a novel and this little sister actually did not exist like she passed away in the story so this little sister was supposed to not exist but she does and she doesn't know what's going on she's just trying to survive and she knows things are weird and she loves this character this girl who's her older sister the first thing she does was get rid of the guy who becomes like the worst fiance for some reason the female lead ends up with this trashy guy and her life is so sad in the story so what's going to happen is our character who is in the little sister's body is going to try to get rid of that guy and have the sister end up with a wonderful person. And there's, I think, four candidates right now. The reason why I'm like, I think, because right now at chapter 58, 
the bigger sister chose someone. Mm -hmm. And now we're focusing on the little sister and her life. But before that, from chapter one to maybe chapter 54, it's all about the little sister trying to figure out, okay, am I meant to be here? Am I not meant to be here? Am I messing things up? Like she's having that problem where people thinking they are messing up the world and it's going to explode because, you know, the universe order laws is being <laughs> broken. But that doesn't happen. But we do see that struggle. We see that built up and then we see the climax and we see all these emotions, these raw emotions from multiple characters. And that's what catches my attention is the multiple characters and how they're going to continue on with this, am I supposed to be here or not? Now, it's, yes, they chose to stay here. They know they're not following the story. So we're going to see how rogue they get in this story. And that's our video of five manga manga's webtoons that we're reading at the moment. Hope you guys like this video and if you liked it don't forget to give it a like and if there's any other titles that you recommend that we read please let us know in the comments below we also have these little videos clips on tiktok so if you're more active there let me know because we're gonna have some of these clips in tiktok we also stream on tiktok too and twitch at lehua superfina it's mostly about talking story or playing honkai star rail if you guys like that check it out we also host podcasts across worlds talking about manga anime and other things you're interested in we've recently had a couple voice actors so please check it out if you like that stuff links are in the description below other than that, my name is Lehila and this is the Superfina channel talking about five manga manuals webtoons that we're reading at the moment. Hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Ahoy ho!